Hello everyone, today I'll be presenting about emergency evacuation systems using graph theory. In a world where mythical creatures and humans coexist, an unexpected problem has emerged. An emotional dragon with fiery breath has taken up residence near our city. While he means no harm, his fiery sneezes have started several fires throughout the urban area. As city planners, we face an urgent question. How can we efficiently evacuate everyone before the dragon's flames spread further? Today, we'll explore how graph theory and specifically flow networks can help us save our city and perhaps teach our dragon friend a valuable lesson about fire safety. As you can see, our dragon friend is causing quite a situation. His flames are threatening several neighborhoods and we need to evacuate people to safe zones quickly. This isn't just a fictional scenario. The mathematical principles we'll explore are used in real world emergency planning for floods, wildfires and other disasters. When disaster strikes, every second matters. City planners need to answer critical questions. How many people can evacuate in a given time? Which routes should they take? Where are our bottlenecks? To solve these complex problems, we need to turn to a branch of mathematics called the graph theory. Looking at our, uh, looking at our city layout, we have residential buildings where uh, people start their evacuation journey. We have roads connecting different parts of the city and we have evacuation centers where people need to reach safety. Our dragon is creating fires throughout the urban area, so creating, ur creating urgency in our evacuation plan. The challenge is finding the most efficient way to move people from danger to safety. This is where graph theory comes in. We can model our evacuation scenario as a directed graph. The residential buildings form our source, where people start from. The evacuation center is our sink, where people need to reach. The circles labeled A and B represent intersections, and the arrows represent roads with their capacities in vehicles per hour. For instance, the road from our, residen uh, from our residential source to, uh, to intersection A can handle 100 vehicles per hour. The road from A to evacuation center can handle 70 vehicles per hour. Similarly, we have roads connecting the source to B and B to the evacuation center. These numbers are crucial because they tell us how many people can travel on each road in a given time frame. Now we transform our graph into what's called a flow network. In this network, each road has two values, its capacity and its current flow. The capacity remains the same. It's how many vehicles the road can handle per hour. The flow represents how many vehicles are actually traveling on that road. Initially, no one is evac evacuating yet, so all roads have zero flow, as shown by the zeros after each capacity. As we begin evac evacuation, we need to determine how to route traffic to maximize the number of uh, people reaching safety. Let's start by sending people along the path from the source through A to the evacuation center. The road from A to the evacuation center can handle at most 70 vehicles per hour, so that's our limiting factor on this route. We update our flows accordingly, and now we have a total of 70 people per uh, hour reaching safety. But uh, we can do better. Let's also use the path through intersection B. Looking at the remaining capacities, we can send 40 more vehicles from the source to B and from B to the evacuation center. This brings our total flow to 110 people per hour. Our dragon's fires are spreading, so maximizing this flow is literally a matter of life and death. Now that we have calculated our maximum flow, let's identify what's limiting us from evacuating more people. These limitations are called bottlenecks. Looking at our network, we can see two critical bottlenecks. First, the road from the source to B can handle 40 vehicles per hour, uh, and it's at capacity. Second, the road from uh, source to A, uh, sorry, from A to the evacuation center can handle only 70 vehicles per hour. And it's also at capacity. These bottlenecks are limiting our evacuation to 110 people per hour, regardless of how we route traffic. In emergency planning, identifying these bottlenecks is crucial for knowing where to focus improvements. So how can we improve our evacuation capacity? Let's make some changes to the network. First, we've widened the road from A uh, to the evacuation center. It's increasing its capacity from seven to, uh, 70 to 100. Second, we've added a direct emergency route from the source to the evacuation center with a capacity of 50. These improvements uh, boost our maximum flow to 190 people per hour. That's an additional 80 people we can save. Looking at our dragon friend, he's beginning to cry as he realizes his actions are being countered by our efficient evacuation planning. He never meant to harm anyone, and seeing that people are escaping safely is making him emotional. While our story features a remorseful, a remorseful dragon, the principles we've explored have critical real-world applications in, emergen in emergency management. 
Flow network analysis allows emergency planners to identify optimal evacuation routes, determine evacuation capacities, find critical bottlenecks, and test various what-if scenarios before disaster strikes. These mathematical tools literally save lives by helping cities prepare for emergencies effectively. Our tearful dragon continues to cry as he sees how effectively we're managing the situation he created. His tears are not just of sadness, but also of regret for the trouble he's caused. To summarize, we've seen how our uh, th how graph theory uh, how graph theory through flow networks provides powerful tools for emergency evacuation planning. We model cities as network with capacity with capacities calculate maximum flow to determine evac uh, evacuation capacity, identify bottlenecks, and test improvement before implementing them. Thank you for joining us on this journey through graphs and emergency planning. Remember, behind every successful evacuation plan. There is some uh, serious graph theory at work, potentially saving thousands of lives.